the final part of this chart, even though I'd love to go on and on and on, I'm going to stick to these things that I can uh, see standing up because we have not got the correct time. It will never be exactly at two o'clock. But one area that is very, very important is the area of communications. Pluto makes an aspect to Mars, disassociate, but nonetheless, it is all about connection and connecting to others, relationships, partnerships. But it's also telling me here that there needs to be a massive transformation by this government in areas of communication and transport, travel, all of those kind of things. And I think it's terribly important that with the kind of energy that this chart is showing that every single way should be investigated to transform the whole transport system, travel concerns and anything where communication is the thing. So of course we're going into the whole technological area too, which is very Uranian in essence and very Aquarian. But it's also very Gemini. And this is the house, the third house, where Jupiter, the planet of blessings, but also big news, expansion and growth, sits with Pluto. There are massive opportunities here for growth and change. The one thing that concerns me is Jupiter squaring up to the south, sorry, the north node. And if the north node is what you get what you give to others and the south node is what you get from others as you so so shall you reap then what comes around goes around and what this chart is saying to me therefore is with jupiter squaring that north node in work and business is that there has to be some kind of transformation some kind of development plan because otherwise business and work and jobs will be affected by any kind of transport or communication system that isn't up to the job. Now what I do find interesting about this chart is I can see very little about ecology and the carbon footprint and everything else. And I think it could be part of that Neptunian, now you see it, now you don't, which makes us believe that that's what the government is heading on to. But you see, there's going to be problems because there is going to be this juxtaposition of various things happening in carbon ecological conservation areas, which sits alongside, yes, I'm not going to travel as much, I'm not going to do this or that, because together, side by side, that will be a more sustainable future. But I don't see it like that. I see from this chart that we may get the impression that's what's happening. But actually, it can't work. Because if you're going to cut your cloth according to what people need, you've got to cut across this ecological barrier and obstruction, much as some of us might not like that. But if the government's going to come up with the right tricks for communications, for travel, for transport links, for commerce, for industry and for business to survive, to grow, to expand, to develop, then there are going to be a lot of shortcuts that will have to be made that will go dead against the whole carbonology, the whole ecology and the whole conservation route. It's going to be very interesting to see how this government can keep the Green Lobby quiet, but at the same time realising that they've got to do things which go dead against what perhaps they announce to the world, because unless they do, industry and business could suffer. I have one little addition to make on this chart, otherwise I'll never shut up because there's so much going on and it's so fascinating. It's the first time I've done something like this, but I enjoy it so much. But it's up there on that Sun and Mercury on the Midheaven, this very powerful Cancerian pull. 
I mentioned it earlier on with the Britishness, with the nationhood, with the development of the various home nations. But to me, this also means that the son in this instance, which I'm going to put down as being the prime minister, connecting with how the world sees Britain, because that's the midheaven, how we're being perceived. And the sun, that radiant body, I think that Gordon Brown is certainly going to shine much more than he's ever done before. But there is one particular younger person, I think a man, who can be very good for him. Could it be David Miliband? Someone like that. It's a younger person, upcoming, growing, very, very good. And together with somebody's brains, a younger person's brains, and with Gordon's ability to be, shall we say, solar, in the sense that he'll radiate his power. And we mustn't forget it is Square, the Ascendant. So we haven't got Prince Charming here. He may want to come across as Baron hard up. But I don't think so. I think the important thing to understand is that the message that's carried across from others is I, I think perhaps the world, Europe, the United States of America, I think one has got to come across as one nation because if they see the United Kingdom fragment, it may well give perhaps European countries and nations um, a reason to criticise and to cause problems because a smaller UK will not have the same amount of power within the, U within the United Europe as the United Kingdom would be as a whole. So I think there's a lot of things that need to be discussed and talked about here when it comes to nationhood and pride and patriotism. Because of this squaring the ascendant, it is so important it's put across in the right way. Because Libra is charm, charm offensive. And Cancer is overtly the nation, the family, the community. And communities are going to be very, very important. This localised thing, which also comes through from the third house. This tells me that going from the bottom that this government needs to understand rural communities, the smaller communities, and not leave them without transport, without post offices. All of that communication stuff I spoke about in one of the other segments is so important because communications are important. If you leave communities without post offices, without the right routes, without the right communications, with a telephone system that can't put broadband throughout the country, then they will feel cut off. Now, if you cut off the roots of a nation, then it's not going to grow. If you cut off the roots of a nation, it will wither and die. And what people will see is a country that is top-heavy. Everything at the top, lots of government, devolved governments, Wales, Northern Ireland, Scotland, no English government. That in itself could be a source of problems and difficulties. And yet the further you go down, there's more governments, local authorities. So a big change in local government could be required to give vitality to the lowest common denominator in the country, but certainly the most important, in my eyes, the roots of the community, the hamlets, that need to feel not cut off, but part of this whole British family. So villages and hamlets feeling part of the next big town, which feels part of the county, which feels part of the region, which feels part of the nation. And there needs to be a joined up, coherent policy so that the government of everything from the parish up to the top all feels connected. Connectedness is so important. Forget the rural communities at your peril, Mr Brown. And certainly as a government per se, it is terribly important that... Other countries view this country as a united kingdom. Otherwise, it could cause problems with our identity and with how seriously people take us.